And I'm going to welcome everybody to our intern chat. We're really excited to have almost all of our interns here. Um, can you guys see the picture yep. I just put yep. up on the screen? Excellent. So um, we are going to go through some questions to ask you guys to hear more about what your experiences were like, what you're up to these days, and how your internship with us um, may have helped you sort of get where you are. Um, first, um, I'm going to have George talk for a moment about how this program got started and why it's the Jim Dow internship. And as he talks, I'm gonna scroll through a few photos that will show um, the interns of the past years. Go ahead, George. Great, thanks, Chrissy. Uh, as many of you know, Jim Dow was our first uh, executive director for the trust. Uh, he served for 16, 17 years uh, in that capacity, and he always liked engaging the younger folks from the community in the conservation field, whether it was trail work, whether it was outreach. Uh, he just loved having younger folks around and just getting them instilled in what they could potentially do locally for, for their community. And when he retired, uh, I think there was a talk about maybe dedicating a bench to him or a trail over at uh, Snow's Cove. And Chrissy and I put our heads together and said, you know, after talking with Jim, he really, really wanted to, to continue uh, his work with young folks on the land and doing conservation and we felt that the best way to honor him was create, you know, this intern program. And the James W. Dow intern program was created and board accepted. So uh, we are happy that this is our sixth year of combination of Maine Coast Heritage Trust interns and Jim Dow interns. Uh, super, super excited. We have three new uh, interns coming in in about a week and a half, and uh, and the ball just keeps on rolling. And thanks to all of you for making this such a great program to date. And each and every year, it gets better and better. And you know, we couldn't have done it without you. And I'm not going to cry. Okay. <laughs> and so we'll note there are a few people who are not able to join us today. So in this photo in the upper left-hand corner was our first ever intern, Tom Fast, holding up the gray fish shirt. And um, Tom is out in Seattle, the Seattle area right now, I believe working for Adobe. And he, even though he's not doing work directly rated, uh, related to the environmental fields or conservation, he is an avid uh, fisherman and outdoorsman. And we follow him on Instagram. And it's really fun to see that he still has a really deep connection with you know, nature and being outdoors. Um, in the upper right hand, we have a photo that has Devin Funt. And she was the second year that we had an intern and she just landed at Mount Rainier where she's going to be a backcountry ranger this summer, which sounds like a really cool position. And um, I have some of her answers to the questions that I'll read on her behalf as we get going. Standing next to her in that photo in the red shirt is Tyler Brenton and he was a trail steward but that year was the first year that we were really able to pair an intern with another person. And that was the first year that we decided having at least two interns was a really good fit so that everybody sort of had a buddy to hang out with and somebody to go work with. Um, and so that was, that was the start of that that year. And I should mention Oliver Broughton over on the top left as well was a trail steward that year. So that's almost everybody um, from that year. And then at the bottom in the dead center on the bottom is Marin um, Brock. And he couldn't be with us today. He just graduated from Prescott out in Arizona. And he is like in the middle of some gigantic, beautiful canyon in Arizona or someplace hiking and uh, was going to try to find cell service to zoom in. But I don't think that he was able to do that. So 
Uh, otherwise, we've got everybody here and we're so excited to have everyone. And we're gonna jump in and start asking you some questions. So our first question is, we would love to have you introduce yourself and just say a few quick words about what year you interned and what you're doing right now. And so I'll just call out your name by my screen and I'll go from uh, the top corner. So Jess, you're up first. All right, hi everyone. I entered last year in 2021. Um, I'm still going to Slippery Rock University in Pennsylvania. I graduate next year, um, majoring in geography and nonprofit management. And then uh, this summer, I'm actually interning for the Island Heritage Trust. Um, so coming back up to Maine, um, back home, I guess. <laughs> Excellent. Soren? Yeah, uh, I was interning in 2019. Um, and currently, I'm with Maine Coast Heritage Trust as the Eastern Maine Land Protection Assistant out of their uh, Somesville office. So I really didn't, didn't travel too far. We love that. Miranda? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Miranda with the Heritage Trust in summer 2020. I'm currently working as a prescribed fire conservation coordinator at the Nature Conservancy based in Denver. Super. Maitland? Hi, I'm Maitland. I was an intern back in 2018 with uh, Edward and I now live out in California in the Bay Area um, and I'm working as a garden teacher at a, a Montessori school out here and as their gardener, so. So great. Andrew? Hi, my name is Andrew. Um, I was an intern with Miranda during 2020 um, and I, right now I'm working um, part-time with Bangor Land Trust and also uh, part-time with Blue Hill Heritage Trust as a seasonal trail steward down there. So not, not having traveled too far. Excellent. Morgan? Hi, I'm Morgan. Um, I interned in 2019 with Soren. Um, I was a Maine Coast Heritage Trust intern. I currently live in Missouri. Um, never been out Midwest, so this is as far west as I've ever been. Uh, but I work for Outdoor Fund. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization as part of Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Um, and so I manage their Roundup program. Uh, it's more conservation philanthropy um, and giving out funds to nonprofits. Great, Edouard, you're last. Hi everyone, I'm Edouard. Um, and I interned in 2018 with Maitland. And uh, right now I'm living in Arlington, Virginia, uh, just south of DC. And I'm working at a general contractor called Clark Construction in their sustainability department. And we're working to uh, minimize the carbon footprint of the company, um, as well as some other initiatives uh, that are generally under the sustainability umbrella. Great, thank you. It's super meaningful to all of us in the, in the office and on the staff and on the board to see sort of where all of the interns end up going, what you end up doing. And even if you're not working directly in conservation, which we knew not all of you were headed that way, it's so rewarding to see how many of you are working in some field that is related to this work. Um, it's exactly why we wanted to have this internship and we hope that you gained something from your time with us that sort of helped get you where you are today or you know, sticks with you as, you as you live your life. And so with that question, we're gonna jump into um, what experience did you learn during your internship that's benefiting you most today? So I'll start with Edouard, I'll go backwards. All right, I was on mute. Um, yeah, I think something that I learned um, that's really benefiting me today is that we got to interact with all different stakeholders um, within the, you know, uh, trust experience. And um, that was valuable learning or lesson for me in that um, 
just like realizing that the how important it is to not just um focus on like one one part of the organization but see it as like a a working engine if you will um and that there are all different parts that go into it um and that it's important to have a good understanding of of all of it uh in order to you know move forward and and uh you know make good change um as you move forward in, in an organization so to me that was uh yeah, the biggest learning point. Great. Morgan? Yeah, I was going to kind of echo that. Um, I think just the diversity of the internship and like how many different aspects um, really of nonprofit work in general we got to experience was really beneficial for me. I kind of started in the super hard science -y field thinking I wanted to be a biologist and then I switched into conservation and then, you know, I love trail work and I love being out on the trails, but then part of me was like, you know, I don't necessarily know after lugging all that wood with George if trail work is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And so um, it was really great to get to work with Chrissy um, on some of the development aspect sides and I really, I think that was kind of where I transitioned and learned that, you know, there's work going on that benefits co conservation. Um, that's not just trail work and, you know, people are needed to do that, but you need to have the passion and the background to know about conservation and what you're talking about um, to your audience. So. That's, that makes, well, that's gonna make me cry. <laughs> Andrew. Yeah, so, I mean, George tried to scare me away with all the gravel he had us all, but it didn't apparently work too well because I'm, I'm still working on them this summer. So, I, again, like the others said, it's really hard to pick one or kind of like one area that, I, that really benefited me the most. I think the variety is honestly what benefited a lot. Uh, but if I had to pick one, obviously, like, uh, I think the overall, like, trail building techniques, trail maintenance, um, that's, that's kind of helped me this past, uh, past summer with KLT, and it's going to help me again this summer with, with BHHT. Um, and also, even uh, like the wetland and the forest inventories we did that summer, those helped me in my senior year of college, um, taking a wetlands course. It really helped me familiarize uh, certain plants and just the overall environments there. So, I, but again, overall, it's, it's a broad, uh, broad area that really helps and not just one thing. Great. Maitland, you're up. You're muted. Sorry, didn't know I was muted. Um, yeah, I think the thing that benefited me the most from the internship was after being an intern there, I just feel like I had so much different experience to like call upon. I've, I've had a lot of like different careers, I feel like after being at Blue Hill. Um, and I feel like I've always been able to like call upon something I did with you all that really benefited me. I mean, we did trail work in the forest inventory and the easement monitoring and the outreach with you, Chrissy. Like I... I didn't really expect to be working in the field of education, but um, there were like things that I did at Blue Hill that like has helped me in that field. And there's like things I do in my job that I learned from just doing trail work and using so many different tools um, that's helped me with just like help building a garden space and like little like construction projects that I need to do that wouldn't really be a part of my job but um i'm like able to figure it out anyway so i think i definitely echo just the most the biggest thing that benefited me was like the diversity of experience i got with you all um has just helped me along the way and has helped me with all the different jobs i've had so excellent miranda um, I'd say that one of the most beneficial experiences from my time there was, um, you know, having that experience of moving across the country and like tying in with a new group of people and getting to work in a new place. Um, since my time at Blue Hill, I have 
been on about eight different crews in eight different states across the country um, with my work at the Nature Conservancy. And I don't think I would have had the confidence to do that without having had that experience at Blue Hill first. That's awesome. And I'll just note you, Miranda and Andrew, were the COVID team. We weren't even sure we were going to be able to do the internship and they still came and we made it work and they got to see sort of like how we were, you know, trying to figure out how we were going to make stuff work right down to like major donor events and they were all hands in. So that was, that was kind of interesting and, you know, a cool experience. Soren, you're up. All right. Well, First and foremost, uh, my internship let, let me know that this is what I wanted to do, you know? So it told me where to focus my time and told me that um, what I had put into that sphere was worth it uh, in the end. Uh, but then specifically, you know, uh, getting to know the ins and outs of uh, the land conservation process and, and what specific elements go into buying or, or putting an easement on a piece of land and then taking care of it uh, in perpetuity, uh, what exactly that entails isn't something I could have picked up at, at a class at school, or I, I couldn't have just asked somebody on the street about that. So that was incredibly valuable for me, um, in ending up where I am now. Great. Jessica. So networking was like kind of the big thing. I think a lot of other people said this too, is just making those connections with other people. And I learned a lot from you, Chrissy, like with development, you've got to make the right connection with the right people. Sometimes you have to even like say the right things, um, but that's a huge thing. And especially in like the nonprofit field, just learning that and getting in with the right people. And then also the day-to-day -day operations, like with a nonprofit, every day is different. And being with the Blue Hill Heritage Trust, I was able to like apply, um, everything that my professors had said in my nonprofit classes, like in the real world, because I just learned all of it in class and then finally was able to put it on like in front of me. So that was a really good experience. And then going back into classes this past year, I've been able to bring up like my experiences from over the summer. I did this, I wrote grants. So I was able to bring it up in my fundraising class. So it was a really good experience for me. Awesome. Right. And Devin says, the training for the internship and summer at BHHT was so well put together, it's hard to pick one thing that benefited me most. The training was super well-rounded, from learning to use a chainsaw and chainsaw safety, invasive species identification and management, etc. I will say I learned the most just from shadowing and working with George so much. I was able to identify so many of Maine's lichen plants by the end of the summer. George does really like lichen. Learning about conservation easements and monitoring them helped improve my GPS and GIS abilities as well. So overall, what benefited me most, I think, was how, how well-rounded I was at the end of the internship with all the new knowledge and skills that I gained. So that was great. Um, I will say one of the biggest things that we have learned from you all is how to make this program better. So every year at the end of the year, we try to sit down with the interns and ask you, you know, what went really well for you? What did you feel like you would have liked more of? And we try to really take that information and feedback to heart and, you know, make it better for the next year's interns. And I feel like we can see incremental improvement in the way we run the program every year. And so I, you know, George and I are really grateful to all of you for your really thoughtful and honest feedback on that, because it's just helping make this program even better into the future. So that's super beneficial and exciting stuff that we get to learn from you. So the next question is, what was your best day on the job or project during your internship? And what was your worst? And so I'll start with Devin. And this is where George might want to turn his screen off and get the get the tissue box. Away. Yeah. So she said, this is another hard question since I truly enjoyed every work day there. So many memorable moments to choose from picking fresh blueberries while easement monitoring to meeting members of the community at events to getting milkshakes with George 
after a long day outside. It was all the best. And I can't choose a worse day when I didn't have one. So I'll, uh, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to go to Soren first. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick my worst day first. I did have one. It was the first day. Uh, <laughs> I got there. I had uh, lost my keys in the pizza parlor, found them, managed to drive up in time. And then right off the bat, we're just lugging wood all day uh, for, for the trail out of Main Street. And it, it was okay in time once I got used to it. But that day, I was breaking in my work boots too. And I had the biggest blisters on my heel afterwards. That was, it, was all, it was all better from there that that one wasn't super pleasant um but then uh what's really stuck with me one of my favorites was um we went out and we took some uh, baseline data for a, a an easement that was in the works um in surrey and uh it was it, it's really cool for me to be like experiencing uh like the next thing like you know like not like the next like concept but like the land you know this is the next project this is this is what's on deck and i i just like i like um being right on the forefront there that that was really cool inside inside look that's great it's very relevant to me now because i think george stepped all day. a big hole on that trip he did yeah <laughs> we were gonna pull him george back george screamed out like he had just broken his leg <laughs> and we were both looking at each other like we are not going to be able I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. He just broke his leg. We've been bushwhacking through these little tiny pine trees. And luckily, you were fine. He was just fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've, gone, I've gone out there one other time to do the whole photo collage again, because it was more than a year since we went out. Stale. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, first time was pretty fun, too. Yeah. So. All right, Morgan, you're up. Oh gosh. Um, I don't really think that I had like a worse day. I mean, there were a few times, you know, like the tree monitoring with Sandy taking the measurements of the trees. Um, that was a bit rough for me. Just, it was really hot one day. I had packed a sandwich and we got back to eat. I'm like starving and I open it up and my sandwich has been in the bottom of my bag the entire time because I forgot to take it out and it was just completely like melted, smashed and demolished and there was no recovering it. Um, luckily we were headed back. So I think I stopped at Subway after that. But um, you know, there's funny stories but I wouldn't say there was like one terrible day that that happened. Um, I think probably there were two really memorable days. Um, one was a volunteer cookout that we did that was just really cool to see the whole community come together um, and come to the cookout we had the main the main conservation corps um, came to that one too which was just so great to like get to meet with them and talk with them they were doing um, the trail Parker what's the what's the name of that trail Parker Ridge? Parker Point to South Street yeah the yeah. big stairs in town yeah so they were helping with that so it was just great to kind of like thank them for their work um, and get to see them interact with our volunteers was great. Um, another really cool experience that I had was uh, the women's wellness event uh, by the hospital, hosted by the hospital. We got to go to that. And that was just really cool because there were so many different people there who just didn't know about our trails and getting to share those, um, those trails and like what trails may be suitable for their needs. I know that specifically I talked to one lady who had an oxygen tank and she just didn't think we had any trails that she could go on. And we were able to help her find like two or three flat trails that met her needs that, you know, she was able to go on. So that was just really powerful um, getting to be involved in seeing the community and how Blue Hill Heritage Trust has really impacted the community, so. That's awesome. Edward. Okay, so I'll say it's kind of hard to pick a day that wasn't, that was a bad day. Um, I, I really enjoyed, you know, all my time out in the field. Um, but I will say, I think the one of my least favorite days was, I think out in Meadowbrook with Sandy. Um, we were just like bushwhacking in like this super, super thick, uh, like saplings basically. And that, um, 
and I, I, I didn't particularly enjoy that. But other than that, it was uh, a great summer. Um, and I'd say my favorite part was working at uh, Peter's Brook, um, getting that trail set up and helping with getting um, the, the smaller bridge up. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And sort of just seeing the progression of that trail was really cool. And every time I'm back in Maine, I, I go back there. It's one of my favorite places to go to um, because it's really pretty and it's, it's uh, a great feeling to be able to go there and say that, you know, I played a part in uh, making that happen. So I'm really grateful for that. That's great. That's right. You and Maitland were there helping construct that Three Bridges Trail, which has become one of the most popular spots we have. It's so beautiful and magical. Maitland, you go. Um. Yeah, Edward, I definitely remember that day out there with Sandy where it's just, I feel like there were bugs everywhere. We were in like head high grass and just like bushwhacking through trees that were like <laughs> this narrow. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was uh, nice after we got out of there and just kind of relaxed. But I feel like my, I almost feel like my best and worst days might have been at Peter's Brook like some days it was like we always went there on Fridays and I feel like sometimes at like 3 30 when we were like still carrying like bags of rocks over my arms were just so tired and I was so beat by the end of the day um and it was just so nice to like get off and relax for the weekend but then I also just remember having like a day there and um after working on it all day just walking along the trail and the rock steps we just made and just kind of walking along the whole trail and seeing like the progression of like I feel like out of all the the um work we did that summer we were there like the most and we put a lot of time into it and a lot of energy into it and so to like walk it at the end of the season and just see all the work we did was like so rewarding and really it was just yeah ended up being I think my favorite place in um blue hill and my favorite land that you all have just because of all the work we put in there and yeah i also just loved all the people that would come out and meet us and work with us out there like having uh yeah we had our own little like community it was always like me george sandy and edward and uh i think it was peter and, and tyler and yep. mary would come out and meet us out there sometimes and bring muffins like it was just a nice like little community building project um so i had i think a lot of my best days were out there um yeah i like that and i want to get back there and hike that trail i think i left before it was like fully finished so it's a goal of mine to get back there and and do the the whole hike and George has now started the extender trail from the waterfall out up above the waterfall. So oh, you definitely, great. you definitely have to come back and check it out. I will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Miranda, you're up. Okay. Um, well, I was prepared to talk about forest inventory monitoring at Meadowbrook as well as hauling gravel. Um, I realize now that those are uh, widely shared experiences. Um, so I just remembered though, during that conversation that day that all the rain fell on that brand new outdoor tent that we had set up during COVID and how mad you were, Chrissy. Um, that was definitely a low point, but I can't honestly say there, uh, there were no bad days on the job, which is, yeah. uh, really fantastic. Um, and favorite days were just like, get it. I really loved exploring all the different preserves around the peninsula. Um, I think. I covered over half of them with Andrew and George and Sandy that summer. So um, just really good times out doing trail work and easement monitoring and all the other projects. Super. Yeah, that was a really infuriating day. Andrew brought that memory <laughs> up the other day because we, we have reinvented how we do our screen tent now and it is much more solid because that was, that was crazy. Yep. Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, I couldn't think of like a particular bad day, only like 
I think there were a couple scenarios where like, I don't know what we were doing out at Meadowbrook, but I, the deer flies out there were like super bad. And I remember Miranda and I were like in the trap, just like, almost not hiding, but like, you could just see them paying off the windows, like trying to get at us. And it's like, do I really want to go out there again? Like, no, no, I don't. But it was like noon, so we still had a lot to do. But so, I mean, that was a bad time, but it definitely didn't define the day overall. Um, and I think it was that. And so, yeah, that was, so that, was, that would have been my worst, my, or I guess my worst experience. But um, for my best, it, I think it was, honestly, it was been like having hauled all the gravel uphill, like over all those stairs um, and then having it actually done. That was the best day, I think, like, cause you could see all of the work that you actually just did and it actually being worth it. And we were actually lucky enough to have like uh, be there when the trail was officially like opened and they had the ceremony. So that was, that was also a really nice time. And I, it, it sucks because I know a lot of you guys put in a lot of time and effort into a trail that you don't necessarily get to see actually open, but we were lucky enough to actually get that, that uh, wonderful day. Yeah, and that, that was our first accessible trail that we had ever created and it it has been used so much in the community and so appreciated and we have another one now and like a couple more in the works and so that's been that's been really great and yeah that whole big project sort of started with Morgan and Soren and then finished with you guys that was a long long haul project for sure Jess okay so my most fondest day to look back on is the first day that I came in. Um, everyone in the office was just so inviting. And then you just threw me right in the truck with George and we went along and talked to a potential uh, easement holder. And that was, I mean, just right on off the bat, getting that experience that I really wanted. Um, and then the worst day for me was the second day. <laughs> And I see a trend that the worst day tends to be with Sandy. <laughs> uh, out on the trail, we went up to Blue Hill Mountain and we get out there. It is the hottest day of the year. It's like 90 degrees. And I'm like, all right, I can do this. It's going to be great. And she hands me the hedge trimmer. I start going up the mountain. I don't make it that far. I was <laughs> huffing and puffing and Sandy is just gone. I can't see her anymore. So I did my best. I, I went, kept going. I got bit by deer flies, um, made a lot of mistakes, learned a lot that day. Um, but one thing that did come from this, that's good. Um, somebody saw me struggling and decided to donate $20 to <laughs> the Blue Heritage Trust. Um, so, you know, from your bad experiences, good things do come from them. And then it was really rewarding afterwards to be like, oh, I did do all that um I did accomplish you know head trimming those hedges so <laughs> and you and Marin made such a sweet and fun video at the end of your experience that if folks haven't seen it yet it's on our YouTube channel and it's on the intern page on our website and it was really really fun you Jess always had her camera out and was always just like capturing moments in the office and they put together a really, really fun video at the end. And Bela and Edward, I can't believe that neither of you put running into a black bear on the trail as your best day, because that was really startling and fun. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Actually. I did too. No, when no, we I were setting up the story there. trail, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay. I totally remember that now. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was a shock for all three of us. <laughs> yeah, it was so close, too. <laughs> it was really close. Yeah. I just want to add real quick that I, for one, enjoyed the forest inventories in Surrey Forest with Sandy. <laughs> so those weren't all bad. I knew, I knew Soren was going to say that. Yeah. That, was, we gotta end with the positive. that was almost my favorite thing. That was great. We also got to go to um, chainsaw training with Sandy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I couldn't remember if it was with Main Coast or with Sandy, but that was pretty fun. I came home with like a little, the notch out of the tree that I had cut down. Uh, and my mom was less than excited to find out about what I had been doing that day.
Excellent. So the next question is, what made you interested in studying a conservation related field uh, at school and, and what drew you to want to intern at Blue Hill Heritage Trust? So I'll start with Andrew. Yes, yeah, so I uh, studied ecology and environmental science at UMaine, um, and I, I kind of always have liked being outdoors, learning about science. I was actually just kind of randomly thinking about that the other day, like how, like, like looking back for what, like through my childhood, I've kind of always liked science-oriented things, um, and I don't know why I was thinking about that the other day, but just, just brought it, like, just random thought, but I think that that drive overall is kind of what brought me to uh, study uh, like uh, natural sciences and conservation in uh, college. And so when I saw the like the internship um, ad online, I I had a little bit of experience with like doing trail maintenance, and, and uh, it sounded like it was a majority outside. So I was like, right there, it's right up my alley. I like working outside, so. And one of the big things for this one is that it was very well-rounded. It wasn't solely out outdoor work. It wasn't solely a research project. I know there were a couple um, other interns that I like had the opportunity to meet through Maine Coast Heritage Trust because since I was uh, part of their internship program as well, um, some of their uh, internship programs through other land trusts they had. They, they definitely weren't as well-rounded and or they worked a lot more on the research projects. And we didn't necessarily have uh, a, a research project that was like taking up our whole summer. So it was, it was kind of interesting to me and I, I really enjoyed the overall like well-roundedness of like two days of trail work and uh, day of development and a day of like doing programming stuff. And it overall, I think that's a very good balance and it gives you a really good um, opportunity to learn a lot of different things instead of focusing mainly on something big or a couple of things during the summer. So I, I think that was what really drew me to the program. Great. Morgan. Yeah, so I kind of, I grew up in casting, which is about 20 minutes from Blue Hill. Um, quite honestly, I only knew of one trail that Blue Hill Heritage Trust had, um, and that was Blue Hill Mountain. Um, really didn't go to Blue Hill a ton in the summer only because Blue Hill in the summer is chaotic to say the least um, with summer people. So we always just kind of strayed to go to Bucksport to get groceries. Um, but I kind of just stumbled upon the internship through the website um, at Maine Coast. Um, I knew more about Maine Coast, just in general, knew about what they were doing across the state. Um, and then looked and saw there was a huge list of places that were looking for interns um, that they would place you with and you had to choose your top three and I was like great one's 20 minutes from my house this is awesome so um, it was kind of exciting to find just this hidden gem near where I live that I didn't really know about um, what drew me to conservation in general probably was just growing up in the area always going and hiking in Acadia um, being involved in conservation groups, even in elementary school, you know, we had a right whale conservation group um, at such a young age, just learning about conservation was great. And then from there, really, I would say probably the time that I really decided it was what I wanted to study um, was when I was probably in my teen years, I went to Tanglewood 4 H camp. I had received in a scholarship from National Audubon Society to go to Tanglewood. And I ended up going there two years in a row, um, got to go on a backpacking trip and learn about um, the watershed over in the Lincolnville area. And so that was kind of just probably the point where I decided that this is what I wanted to study um, and just how important it was that we preserve and conserve the land around us, so. Great, Edward. Um, so for me, what initially got me interested in uh, studying conservation was um, just traveling when I was a kid uh, and younger ages, uh, seeing different landscapes in the world that I really enjoyed and, um, you know, had great experiences in uh, that really 
made me want to learn more about it and learn how to preserve it um, in in a world where you know pres like nature preservation is not necessarily you know a priority um, even though it should be um, and for to work at Blue Hill Heritage Trust something what really made me want to work there is the fact that my family is from Maine and you know I've uh, always been coming to the Blue Hill area for ever since I was, you know, less than one year old. Um, and so I have really great memories there. And uh, the, the Blue Hill Peninsula um, is, you know, really a special place to me. Um, and uh, I, I thought that it would be a great way for me to contribute to a place that I have, um, you know, really amazing memories from growing up and uh, that I in love so much and just you know, spending time there and exploring it more in depth um, while also making a positive impact in the community. Um, yeah, that was, that was the main reasoning for uh, working at Blue Hill Heritage Trust. Great, Jessica. Uh, so, I grew up kind of with the same experiences that Morgan had. Um, I did 4-H, I did an environmental governor school. And I will say that um, growing up in the Blue Ridge of Virginia did help with like my environmental side. And so I knew I wanted to be involved with like environmental sciences. And when I went to school, like I immediately changed my major to environmental studies and I got into like conservation and a conservation course taught me about land trust. And so hearing about land trust, I looked into them. I interned for one the summer before I came to Blue Hill. And the next year I was looking to do something similar. And I was looking on the Land Trust Alliance website and up comes Blue Hill. And I was like, no way, my grandparents have a house up in Maine, not that far from it. So it was just a perfect match um, for me. And, you know, getting to spend the summer with my grandparents was super nice too. So it was like a a match made in heaven, in my opinion, just right in front of me. So I couldn't resist applying. Great. Soren. Um, so I, I kind of ended up in conservation because I wanted to be outside a whole lot and uh, deal with the environment in a way that wasn't destructive to it. And this is about the farthest from that as you can get. So that, that tidied that right out. Um, and then uh, I, uh, I wasn't I wasn't sure how exactly that would shake out in actuality after I, I had a degree in it. So I was like, oh, maybe land trust is a good idea. And when the opportunity popped up to uh, have an inter internship in Blue Hill where I could uh, stay with my grandma for a summer on Parker Point Road and uh, tramp all around the peninsula, that seemed like a pretty fine deal to me. Um, and I, I don't know. I couldn't ask for a, a, a prettier nook of the woods to, to spend a summer in. Agreed. Miranda. Um, like many of the, the other folks here um, growing up, I was lucky to develop deep connections with certain landscapes and, and places just um, based on traveling and uh, visiting family and things like that, mostly in the Western US because I'm from Colorado. Um, I got a degree in natural resources management from Colorado State University and had spent a couple seasons working for the, the feds um, in the West, but decided I wanted to take a different approach to conservation. Um, I saw the post for the Blue Hill Heritage Trust position through the Land Trust Alliance um, and decided to uh, try something new for that summer after college. And it took me a little bit to develop that same connection to like forests and oceans, um, but by the end of the summer, I really did. And I think I'm a, a much better land steward for it now. Great, Maitland. Um, yeah, I think like Soren and I, I got into this field by just loving to be outside as a kid and loving hiking and learning about the outdoors. And by the time it was like time for me to go to college, I was like, I don't know what I like to study. Anything I've like learned in school, um, I like wasn't that interested in. So I was like, I'm gonna study wildlife biology. Like that's always what I had a passion for. And like, I want a job that puts me outside. 
Um, so yeah, I studied wildlife and conservation biology in school and I had I had had a job one summer that was like full on trail work, like living in the back country, like just making uh, building trails all day. And then I had another job that was more like forestry related and met doing forestry measurements. And then I remember after graduating, like applying to different places in New England, I applied to like, I think something in Vermont and New Hampshire and Maine. And um, I remember kind of being on the fence of like, oh, I don't know, like where I want to work. And then I just remember talking to you two after interviewing and just how easy it was. Um, I don't know how friendly you all were, how easy it was to talk to you and being like, oh, like, I was like, so what kind of things do we do there? And you just like listed all the different things I would learn and get to do in that role. And I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to go up there. Like, I didn't even know. I had never been much past Portland before, but I was like, this seems like a cool new area to go explore and work for a small land trust in Maine. And yeah, a lot of the other jobs I feel like I was looking at had this like really strong focus and I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. So it was really exciting to go somewhere that I felt like I was going to get a well-rounded like um, conservation experience. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I ended up with, at Blue Hill. You know, every year when George and I <clears throat> go through the stack, which gets increasingly bigger every year of applications and has to have to whittle it down to just who are we going to interview, which is usually five or six people. And then from that, back when Maitland and Edouard and Devin were here, it, we were only budgeted for one intern. And it was the year of Maitland and Edouard that George and I finished, I think it was Edouard's interview, and we had already done Maitland's, and we walked right into Hans's office and said, you're going to need to find us more money, because we're not picking. <laughs> like, we want yeah. both. We need both. Now we're doing two, like forever. And that was, and it's, you know, and it is now hard to choose two. So we have three this year. So it's yeah. Like, it's, yeah. And we have so many people apply. I mean, some years, dozens of people apply from around the country and, you know, increasingly more kids who have main roots, which is great too. And it's, it's really hard for us to choose. Um, who to come, but we've never chosen wrong. We've never yeah. picked, never picked a bad intern, not ever. <laughs> Devin says, uh, I knew I wanted to go into conservation from a young age. My family traveled a lot in national parks and that helped me realize I wanted to be a part of protecting these places. The internship caught my eye because it really seemed like a great learning opportunity and a chance to see that there are other career paths you can take in parks and forest resources than just joining the park and forest service. While I am a part of that park service now, I definitely see myself working in a land trust again in the future. And that is definitely due to my experience at Blue Hill Heritage Trust. So that's great. And David, who um, is on watching, he wanted to know if any of you, if your internship was related to a college course or it was a college requirement. You can just raise your hand if it was. So Jess, Jessica mm -hmm. and Morgan, uh, not Morgan, Morgan's on here. I know Devin, it was as well. So um, a lot of you are just doing it because it's a cool opportunity, I think, to enrich what you're already studying and get a little, you know, resume booster and get a little real world experience. So um, Jessica, have, can you touch really briefly on whether your professors like really saw the value in you interning at a land trust? Yeah, so I, I didn't count. It could have been counted as college credit for me because um, as a double major, I need like a nonprofit internship. Um, but doing it over the summer, it cost like $3,000. It would probably cost more than that because I think I could have counted this as like 12 credits. Um, but they definitely see the value uh, in, in land conservation as an internship, especially in like the nonprofit sector. And there's not a lot of students at my school that are doing that sort of avenue because a lot of them are like nonprofit and then they have like their other focus, which is like education or the health sector. But um, there's only like one other girl I know that's doing environmental studies and she's not even 
into like the land trust side of it, she's getting into more GIS. Um, but yeah, they, it's definitely something that is like an official um, internship considered at my school. Um, you can get credit for it. Terrific. And I know Marin also who couldn't be here, his internship was a part of his senior project at Prescott. And so I actually served a dual role of, you know, mentoring him through and being like almost an advisor for him through that, which was interesting. And Edouard, who this was, you also went to Prescott, but this wasn't a part of your thing. During your master's, you came back and did some educational outreach programming with us as a part of your master's degree. Was that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, and it was during the COVID summer. Um, and thankfully, you know, things worked out with all the social distancing and stuff like that. But I, I thought it was uh, a perfect opportunity to, you know, uh, connect again with the trust and, um, and uh, while also doing some work for my master's, it was one of the bigger projects that we did. Um, I think it was, that one was called a leadership challenge. Um, so yeah, it was great to be able to reconnect and um, teach some of the younger um, kids of the area, uh, you know, about plastics and why they're bad and how it affects the, the environment that uh, they all live in and love so much, so yeah. Yeah, and you can see Edouard's um, presentation. We recorded it and it's up on our YouTube channel as well. So that's really good. So the last question is, what advice do you have for our future interns? With the benefit of hindsight, what was the most impactful part of your internship or just a lesson learned? So I'll start with Miranda. I would just like any future intern um, to note that it seems like most of the, the other interns have connections to the Blue Hill area. Um, I came in as a complete outsider and I would definitely encourage that. During my time there, I got to uh, live with two host families on the peninsula. And that was um, a very enriching experience just in line with the work I did um, at the Heritage Trust during the day. So. Um, if you're from, if you're not from Maine or the area, I would um, definitely encourage you to still consider this program. And um, I don't know, I don't know another another takeaway. Um, it was it was just a really great experience. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna go to Maitland. Um. Yeah, I also came in as kind of an outsider and I had I had an amazing experience with my host family as well. Um, they were they were really wonderful, kind people that took great care of me. Um, and yeah, just like really showed me the area and were fun to be with after work. But yeah, I, I think I would just say like, just enjoy it. Like I loved exploring that area, having not really ever been there. It was the most beautiful place I think I've ever lived. And it's actually like a goal of mine to eventually move back to Maine because I just loved it up there so much on the coast of Maine. Um, and the Blue Hill Heritage Trust properties are just so, so nice and unique. Like there's so many of them too. Like having the opportunity to like get to explore all those is like part of the job. And even I remember just going and hiking a lot of them on weekends sometimes. Um, yeah, I would say just take the time to explore that area because it's a, it's a really special place. It's beautiful there, so yeah. So Devin says, I would just say to future interns to go in with an open mind. Some might be going into experience already knowing what they want to get out of it, but everyone that works at BHHT and even the community have so much knowledge to offer. You might find yourself interested in a new topic or an area of field that you didn't expect. And Devin was another outsider. She was not from Maine. She didn't have local connections. And she was another person who stayed with host families and had a really wonderful experience. Same with Tom Fast our first intern, he was from Southern Maine, but he really didn't know the area and he stayed with host families too. So this is a really good time before I get to the rest of you to just give a huge shout out and just mega doses of love 
to the people who have opened their homes, to the interns who've needed housing. They do this for free. They're so welcoming. They're so accommodating. It's just incredible. And our interns have lived in some pretty nice places, I will just say, like right on the water, like really, really nice places. So the Leonard family, Sonia and Peter and Lily and Thatcher, um, they were just so accommodating and, and had Maitland and brought him right into the family. Phyllis and Will Taylor have hosted multiple interns and have just been so generous. Uh, Mary and Don Ely have also hosted interns and they are so wonderful. My, my mom, Jo Barrett, hosted an intern for us and that was really incredible. And then board member Marsha McKeague and her husband, Chris Austin, have hosted and all of these people just make it so that George and I can bring in the best of the best to come and work with us. So we're so grateful. George, did I miss anybody? Uh, not to my knowledge. Okay, I didn't think so. No. All right, Jess, you're up. So I have two things. Um, always be open to suggestions. Um, and then the second thing is to always ask questions. I think one of the biggest things I learned um, and some of the most, most impactful experiences I had were from asking questions. And I kind of learned that from Marin. He was always curious, always asking you know, things. And so I was grateful to have um, spend that summer with him to learn that sort of curiosity. Because I feel like I was always interested in things, but I never knew how to quite ask questions and you don't know how, you don't have to know how to ask questions, you just have to do it. <laughs> so um, always, always be curious um, and stay interested and you never stop learning. Um, so just keep on going, keep learning. Awesome. Soren. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. And the, the, my advice to any future intern would be to, to uh, take full advantage of everybody around you because uh, it's not very often that you have the opportunity to just like any question you have, any, any idea, you can just bounce off of somebody who's uh, super entwined with the community and the land or has been involved with conservation for, for, for eons. Um, uh, and that was, that was just, that's tremendous, especially uh, for me who wanted to stay um, in the area. Uh, it, it, it was very useful to, to, to speak to people, uh, not just at, at local heritage trust, but also at, at uh, Maine Coast Heritage Trust and, and other partner organizations as well. So uh, yeah, don't don't uh, don't take the people around you for granted if you're if you're in if you're in these shoes. Andrew. Yeah. So I guess overall, just going open-minded. Um, the other big thing for that uh, I took away was to. Uh, make sure to know or make sure to let them know uh, if you're an incoming intern what you hope to get out of the internship um, and just even if it's not like part of the like on the list of stuff that you that you thought that you were going to get to or if it was uh, and you are really interested in it um, just make sure that they know that you're interested in that and hold them to it because it's it's definitely worth it um even if you just touch on it um and even if it's not part of the internship originally there's there's a lot of connections there and they can definitely work something out and summer goes fast right so. summer does, yeah they, they try to pack so much into like what is it like 10 weeks or something probably less so it it, they try to pack so much in and try to get it so so broad that it Sometimes they skip over stuff or sometimes it's not covered to the, to the best you might want it. So just if you want more, they'll, they'll always be help, uh, helpful. Great, Morgan. Yeah, I think um, just soak it all up, go to as many community events as possible. I think that that's really important. Um, also talk to as many people as possible. There are always people coming in and out of the trust. Um, there are always volunteers that are on the trails. I got to go out with a lot of them and that was cool just to you know, see things through other people's viewpoint was great. Um, but really just getting involved in the community while you're in the internship, I think is probably the most important. Um, and definitely communication as well. Um, 
with George, with Chrissy, just making sure that um, you're checking in and if there's something that you've said like, hey, I really like this um, or, hey, I do this on the side, like, you know, I don't mind taking photos. Um, you can always be put to work. Um, if there is something that you like or you have a hidden skill, maybe you're really good at graphics and you just end up designing all the materials. So um, even if you have just a hobby that you like to do, letting them know um, and they can incorporate that into the internship, so. Super. Edward. <clears throat> uh, for me, I would say, so first off, I agree with a lot of what's um, already been said, but um, yeah, going in with an open mind. Um, I think internships are experiences that, you know, are meant to help you figure out what you, what your calling really is. Um, so just putting your all into every, you know, different tasks that you're given, even if you might not enjoy it, you know, your experience in, um, in doing that task, even if you don't like it, will help you guide, help guide you to, um, you know, your ultimate uh, calling. And um, yeah, you know, and just try and enjoy uh, the, the, the beautiful peninsula. Um, it's, to me, it's kind of hard to not enjoy because it's so beautiful there, but um, yeah. So I need you all to unmute because there's one more piece of advice that you have to give incoming interns. And that is, Morgan and Andrew, I'm waiting for you. Okay. What is the number one way to get on George's good side? Work hard. Soda. Blueberry soda. Blueberry soda. Blueberry soda. Blueberry soda. <laughs> I was gonna say I work have a four harder. pack of blueberries. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say pug nuts, but. <laughs> oh, pug nuts. Yeah. yeah ice cream also yeah ice cream also counts yeah ice cream blueberry soda and yeah working working hard and having a good attitude but yeah george do you have anything to say or ask i i do have a lot to say here uh, i want to thank everybody you have enriched my life so much and you know it's, we, we we strive to get the best the cream of the crop each and every year and we've succeeded each and every year and hats off to Chrissy and Sandy and you know Lander uh, and Hans and you know you guys are just you're going to just shatter the world you know you're going to just break boundaries and you know that's what we wanted this internship to be and uh, you know from the heart you know thank you. So. Mm -hmm. We really hope that our interns learn and get to work with every member of our staff. And, you know, I think you've all worked with, you know, Beth and Lander and Sandy and George and Hans and me in some capacity, yeah. as well as past people who yeah. have worked with us. Yeah. And I know it's been meaningful for everybody. Um, and George, are you able to turn your camera around on your wall? I mean, you guys are so present in our day-to-day -day lives still it's pretty it's pretty amazing I mean you're all up there you're all on the wall and you know we see you every day we think of you every day you know we laugh about memories and you know those really hilarious hard things we put you through like telling Morgan she was gonna schlep wood for 20 minutes and it was like eight days um so it's it's such a joy to get to work with people like you and um because you guys are so awesome we want to keep doing it every year so and you guys are you're you're the next generation out there who's making such a huge difference in the world and we're so you know honored to know you and to you know call you part of our family so anybody have anything else they want to say any thoughts or questions you have for us just thank you all for providing such a amazing experience to all of us each year. And it's cool to see, yeah, this kind of community growing from all the past and present interns. So yeah, thank you. That's like an experience I'll never forget. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. <laughs>
Uh, whether you're near or far, far, come back, come visit. You know, yeah. even if it's for an hour, uh, you know, we love it. We love it when you come back. You know, you can bring blueberry soda, but you know, you, you don't have to. <laughs> Soren we'll do does. for a main visit. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks, you guys. And I'm just going to give a big pitch for supporting the intern program. We have an endowed fund right now that we're working on getting up to over $400,000 so that in perpetuity, we can keep this show going. And in the meantime, it's a part of our regular operating budget. So every donation that comes to the trust help support the internship in some way. We also have some really generous folks out there in our community. Um, I'll give a, a very warm shout out to Jeannie Becton, who has recently been really supporting this program, as well as some others. And um, it, it really helps us do this program in a way that doesn't stress out the finances of the organization, because we feel like this is such important work working with you guys and trying to provide these experiences for you. So thank you for being such shining stars uh, to help us show people how worthy this program is and keep being awesome and doing the good work that you're doing. We love you guys. You're a part of our family forever. All right, I'm going to stop recording.